asking him to keep changing mine. Amen. <laughs> it's good to be back here. I always love being with y'all. I love being at church. Amen. I like being here. A lot of great memories here. Some friendships I'll never forget. And the Lord's done a lot. We've seen the Lord do a lot here. And y'all have seen it every week. Isn't it something what the Lord can do? So we give you all the glory, Father, for what you're doing. The Lord has laid it on my heart, a message out of Romans tonight, chapter 6. So if you can find your way there. Romans chapter 6. Glad to be at church tonight. Say amen. 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 Happy Labor Day. Yes, it is. Amen. Uh, we, we celebrate uh, in our country the results and the wonderful things because of, you know, in the history of this nation, just the workforce and all the benefits we've enjoyed from that. And we praise God for that. As messed up as this thing's getting, we still live in the greatest nation on the planet. Amen. 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 But we're not here tonight to praise America. We're here to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you for that song. Change my heart, oh God. You know, the Lord saves us with something in mind. He sent his son to die on the cross so we could live a life that we couldn't live before. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. And sometimes we struggle to live that life. It reminds, well, it reminds you what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No, no one cometh to the Father except by me. But the life he was talking about is a life that is possible and only possible by being saved and living by the grace of God. Amen. There's something God has in mind for you and I. It's a life of freedom. We are free from the penalty of sin the moment we get saved and trust in Christ for our salvation. Amen, church? Amen. But we are free from the penalty of sin. But we can also live in the freedom, and we should, from the power of sin over our life. Amen. Amen. So, uh, y'all have had a lot of baptisms here. This church led the association of baptisms a few years ago. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. But picture the baptism. I mean, you know what it's a picture of. We, we, are, we are buried with him in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Amen. That's Amen. that life, that abundant life that comes by living for Jesus. Amen. So tonight, uh, I don't know if you're struggling to live in that freedom or maybe you just don't feel like you're living in victory tonight or, or, or maybe you just feel like there's a void in your life right now maybe you're struggling with something maybe you're some, there's something in your life you know you need to let go of but you just don't want to shake it let me tell you friends that will hinder your fellowship with the Lord Amen. And all that does is that that jail cell that we were freed from the day we got saved, it just puts us right back in it. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. The title of tonight's message is simply this, two words, bury it. Bury it. Bury it. Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 6, let's look at the Bible together. If you could stand with me, let's read a few verses together. Stand and let's honor God's word tonight. Aren't you glad you have a Bible tonight? Amen. Amen. Romans 6 and verse 1, if you're there, say amen. 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 The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. 
For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, Death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that freedom that comes in no other way but by the blood of Jesus and by us trusting in him for our salvation. Lord Jesus, we thank you for loving us enough to pay our sin debt so we can live in freedom, so we can walk in this quality of spiritual life that you have for us in this world. And God, some glad day we can come home to be with you. But until then, Lord, all the abundant life that awaits those of us who will keep our sin buried and live for your glory, God, point out the things that need to go today that are causing us from walking in victory. Point out the things in our heart tonight, Lord, that need to go that are keeping us shackled, imprisoned, and bondaged, without power. God, please help us tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 You may be seen. <clears throat> As we read scripture, according to the grace of God we have received, would you agree with me that we have a responsibility to the grace of God? Yeah. Would you agree with me that we should live a life in relation to that grace that God has shed abroad upon our lives as we have trusted in Christ for our salvation? Oh, I, it's hard to keep a good fellowship if we're still walking in sin, amen. And so uh, many people want to get saved and they want to keep living like they've been living. Have you been there? If that's you or has been you in the past, how was that working for you? <laughs> I will tell you this. If you're truly saved, I don't believe the Holy Ghost will let you get along with that too long. Because he will hound you. The hound dog of heaven, the Holy Ghost, will convict you and stay on your trail. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now, if, if you're still living in sin and that does not bother you, I would say tonight that you need to check yourself spiritually. Because if you're saved, the Holy Spirit will not allow it. It says when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Keep that in mind tonight. But aren't you glad, though, as Christians, if we stumble, or let me say again, when we stumble, that the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But how can we live in victory in these days? How can we live in this freedom, this new life, this newness of life that the Bible is talking about here? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, in the first two verses, I want to tell you the first thing we got to do is to avoid cheap grace. Amen? Amen. If we're living in sin after we're saved, if we're still living in habitual sin, if we're still following the wrong people, if we're still hanging out in the wrong places, if we keep living that way, uh, it's like grace on a discount, amen. It's like we got it on sale or something. And that's not the case. We need to avoid cheap grace, amen. amen. It's not just fire insurance. You've heard me say that before. We have a responsibility to the grace of God. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. Amen. Mercy is not getting what we do. But the grace of God. We can't live under cheap grace. Listen, our sin was paid in full. And the price that was paid for our sin was not cheap. Amen. Amen. We were bought at a great price, the Bible says. Amen. But don't you, aren't you glad tonight? Just think about the magnitude of our salvation, if you will. It is an act of the Holy Spirit. We are, generated, re, we are regenerated by the Holy Spirit. And God remembers our sin no more. The Bible says he cast them to the bottom of the sea. Amen? Think about that. They're gone. Wiped clean. Forgiven. 
Amen. Amen. We can't do it for ourselves. So who else do we owe our life to? Just Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Listen, so the question is, why should we live as if we're still dead in our sins? If we're not. You ever ask yourself that question? Why should we still live as if we're dead in our sins if we're not? If you're saved tonight by the blood of Jesus, our sins were killed, they were buried, they were wiped clean. We have eternal life and a new walk available because we're free in Christ and Christ alone. Amen? Amen. So we need to avoid cheap grace. Amen? Amen? Don't take what happened for you, and I don't need to take what happened to me for granted. Because Jesus saved us completely. Amen. Amen? To the uttermost. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. Number two, here's something I want to talk to you about. Why should we walk in the newness of life? Sometimes we might get hurt. Somebody might do something we don't understand. We might even get hurt at church. Oh, that would never happen, now, would it? <laughs> but we're still supposed to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Freedom. Not in bondage. We should walk in the newness of life no matter what comes our way. Representing Christ. Shining the light in the darkness. Being a witness. Our whole life, our whole purpose in life is to be a witness. Amen? That's, what is, that's the centerpiece of our life as we get saved. So we should walk in the newness of life because there are some things that are coming. Number one, we're going to have a new body one day. How many of y'all ready for that? <laughs> Look at verse 3 and 4. It says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5, For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, all, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. I'm excited to get a new body someday. These old bones are not worthy of heaven, amen? 1 Corinthians 15, in the beginning of verse 51, the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this, in, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass, saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O great, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, but the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're going to get a new body. We're going to get a heavenly body. This is not fit for there. This old broken down, sinful flesh, it has no place in heaven. But we should walk in the newness of life, number one, because we're going to get a new body. Amen. Why are we going to get a new body? Because we're saved. Amen? And Christ's not going to leave us like he found us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The second reason we should walk in the newness of life is this. Because our old man is buried with him. We just read it. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. If you're glad about that, say amen. amen. Here's another thing. Because sin is destroyed in every way. Because of Jesus. And the washing of his blood. Because of his atonement. Because of his sacrifice. His blood is powerful enough to save the world. Amen. amen. We're free from the penalty of sin. And we can walk in freedom from the power of sin. And one glad day from the presence of sin. Aren't you glad? That's another reason we should walk in the newness of life because of all these things. Amen. We were dead in our sin, the Bible says, before Jesus came along. We were dead in our sin. Dead in our trespasses and sin. Think about that. We were walking spiritual zombies, brother. You know what a zombie is? It's a walking dead person. That's what we were before we got saved. We were dead. Spiritual zombies. But thanks be to God. Amen. He loved us enough to send his son to die for us. So therefore, our old lifestyle, this sin in our life, if we're going to walk in victory, 
We need to bury that sin. Amen. Think about it. What happens if something dies? Eventually, what does it do? It decays. Then what do you do with it? If you don't want to smell it. You dig a hole and you bury it. You clean fish. What do you do with the fish remains? You, you bury it in your garden. You grow big maters, right? Or if you got something that dies, you bury it. Give it a proper burial. But if you don't bury it, it's going to stay. So why why would we want to dig that something back up? Because it's still going to stay. Same way with our sin. It's been buried with him in baptism. Amen. And we're raised to walk in the newness of life. So listen, why should we bury it? I'm going to give you three more things. Look at verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We should bury that sin so we don't serve it, number one. Number two, listen to this. We should bury it so we don't obey it. Look at verse 12. Romans 6. Let not sin therefore reign or rule in your mortal body that you should obey in the lust thereof. We should bury sin so we don't obey it. And it says in the lust thereof. Lusting is desiring uh, something that is forbidden. We don't need to lust after anything like that. If you're doing that, that sin needs to be buried. So we do not obey it. Thirdly, we should bury our sin so we don't yield to it. Look number three. Look at verse number 13. It says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, which we are, hallelujah, if you're saved, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves service to obey, his servants you are to him you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You're going to be servants of what you yield to. Yields like obeying from the heart. Your heart's desire. You'll be servants to what you're obeying. You see the progression there? If we yield to it, we're going to obey it. And if we obey it, we're going to serve it. That's what sin can do to us. We need to bury that sin, amen. Or we're not going to walk in victory. I'm going to tell you this. A lot of times we're not walking in victory because of our own ignorance. Amen? Amen? Ignorance keeps us from walking in victory. Notice in verse 3, it says, Know you not, or don't you know, that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized to in death? He's like, look, don't you know that you're free in Christ? Look at this, verse 16 again. It says it again, Know ye not, that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Like, don't you know? And like, look, just wake up and smell the coffee here. You're not walking in victory. You're not experiencing the life God has for you because you won't bury the sin in your life. Amen? You're living under cheap grace. That's the problem we have when it happens. So listen, let me ask you a question. Are you living in freedom? Are you really living in the freedom that Christ died so you could live in it? I mean, is there sin in your life that you need to bury? You know, pride can blind us from that truth right there. Our pride can keep us. Oh, I'm doing all right. It's just a couple of little sins I'm hanging on to. Oh, it's just, you know, sometimes we get a little issue here, issue there. We just say, oh, it'll be all right. I'll deal with it later. Well, no. You don't need to wait. One sin leads to another. It's just like one lie leads to another. One prideful event leads to another. Sin breeds sin, amen. Think about it. We need to live in freedom. Listen, is sin having power over you? Think about it. Here's what we need to know. We need to know that Jesus died so we can be free from that. Why go back to jail? What I'm trying to say. Have you ever seen anybody been in jail? I don't care if it's in there for one night or 30 years. When it come time for them to have been released. Have you ever seen them walk out 
and try and go back in and sit down. I want out of here. That's what we're doing if we let sin rule over our life. Once we get saved, we shouldn't want to sin no more. And if our pride's allowing us to sin, we're just going right back to jail. We're not free. Why live chained up? Let me get them grave clothes off, I heard one preacher say, amen. We got some new garments to wear. Garments for freedom. Listen, so this shovel that we were burying dead stuff with, a lot of times, we we'll use it to dig that sin back up in our life. Or some people just like to dig anyway. I've been in a lot of churches where there's some people got a show, but man, they just keep on digging. They always look for something wrong. They always looking for some way to stir up something. They always digging a hole over here trying to make some dissension. Or maybe they digging over here because they want some control or they got some agenda. Man, that's sin just like the rest of sin. What what is the sin? Instead of using a shovel to dig it up, maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's still uh, a sipping sane. I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of drugs. Maybe it's some kind of pornography. Maybe it's some kind of sin. I don't know what it is, but God does. Instead of digging it up, we need to use a shovel to bury that sin. Amen. We need to cover it up and bury it. It's dead and gone. Christ has forgotten it. Why should we bring it up? All it's doing is it's keeping us in chains and keeping us from walking into victory that God has for us through the blood of His precious Son. Amen, church? Amen. How are you using that shovel? Stinky fruit. You ever smelled any? <laughs> Rotten fruit. Need to bury that too. You see, we used to have some rotten fruit before we got saved. That's sinful fruit. That's all we were bearing. Amen. Listen, we need to bury that too. Look at verse 20. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Well, that's scary, is it not? When we were servants of sin, in other words, we were dead in our sin and trespasses. There was no righteousness in us at all. Because we weren't forgiven. We hadn't been ransomed. We haven't been rescued from the penalty of our sin because we have it by faith, trusting in Christ for our salvation. We were not saved yet. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But, I love that conjunction. Don't you love the buts in the Bible? But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You notice that progression in verse 22? Is that not an outline of the whole Christian faith right there? Look what it says. But now being made free from sin, it's the day we got saved. Hallelujah. And become servants to God. I said you surrender to God. Started being a fisher of men and following him. You have your fruits in the holiness. Now you're bearing fruits of righteousness and holiness. Instead of that old stinky, dead, rotten fruit we had when we were living in sin without righteousness. And then there it is. And the end, everlasting life. There's our glorification right there. Hallelujah. There's our life. That's a picture of what our lives should be. So this sin in our life, this stinky fruit that we used to produce and bear, if there's any hanging on your tree right now, you need to shake it off and bury it. Make a hole and bury it. Don't you want to walk in victory? Don't you want to walk in that freedom, that abundant life that Jesus promised in John 10, 10? Listen, what is it that you're obeying from the heart? Listen, I... I looked at Scripture... I never saw God use a perfect person. <coughs> Y'all know I'm preaching to myself too, right? Amen. I mean, I, I, I better be. I wouldn't want to listen to a preacher who wouldn't preach it to himself too. Amen. But listen, we got, God wants holiness in our life. His work is too holy. The church's purpose is too holy for us to have sin in the midst. 
We want power in God's church. I'm telling y'all, the building's looking great over here. And, and the Lord's going to finish that building. And there's no telling what's going to happen here. But don't you know the enemy has got a target on that building? Don't you know the enemy has got a target on every member of this church and those who are going to join this church? Every Christian, every believer that walks in this building, he's got a target on your mind. He's got a target on your back. He's got a target on your heart. And what's he going to try to do to keep the victory from flowing around this place and the power of God off this place? He wants to get every one of us to get that shovel and start digging that sin back up. Anything that can cause division, anything that can cause power struggle, anything that can cause any kind of problems in this church to quench the spirit and grieve the spirit of God out of this place. He wants us all. He's going to tempt somebody to do something that's going to cause problems in here. I'm just telling you, whatever it is, turn from it, repent, get your shovel and bury it, and let's walk in freedom in this place. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's what we got to do. And it's not just here. This is just a building. Y'all are, you guys are Lake of the Pines Baptist Church. It happens out there. Amen. Great place to worship, learn the scriptures, exhort one another, encourage one another, teach one another, disciple one another. Oh, but out there, that's where the fruit is. Amen. Amen. Think about it. We were saved, in other words, we were saved to live and not die. Does that make sense? Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. But we were saved to live and not die. In other words, we were saved not to live a dead Christian life, but a powerful Christian life. Amen, church? And we can do it. But we got to bury whatever it is. What we got to do? Here's what. So what do we do now? Verse eleven. Look at it. Paul writes. Likewise, reckon ye your own selves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word reckon means to realize. We basically just got to realize who we are in him now. The devil does not want us to be convinced of that. We need to realize who we are in Christ. Listen, we are alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. And nothing can change that. <clears throat> Amen? We're going to heaven. We have a life available here. That's powerful. That's exciting. It's not boring, by the way. It's amazing when God starts moving. When we make room for Him in our life. Listen, we got to do three things. We got to know, we got to reckon, we got to yield. We got to know. Look at verse 3 again. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death. And then verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. In verse 9, the Bible says, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him, for in, he, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Listen, dead to sin, living for God's glory. Listen, we, we just got to know that. Amen? We know it's true. We don't need to live like it's not. So we need to know, and then we need to wreck, and we just talked about that. We need to realize who we are in Christ. We need to count on that. We need to rely on that. Amen? Because we are alive in Him. Thank God for that. Amen. I'm glad. I don't know about you. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. Amen. And I'm glad I have a future. I'm glad I got a seat in heaven that's protected by the power of God that does not fade away. Plenty of reasons to rejoice right there. And then thirdly, we need to, we talked about yield a while ago. Look at verse 13. No reckon and then yield. Verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But, there's that conjunction again, 
Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Don't yield to unrighteousness. Don't yield to sin anymore, but yield yourselves unto God. Unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. we got a choice to make. Who are we going to yield to? You know what happens? Whatever we yield to, we're going to serve. I'm serving God. As the Bible says, but as for me, amen. And then verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, whereas ye have yielded your members' service to uncleanness and to iniqu even in to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants of, to righteousness unto holiness. Righteousness. It's mentioned several times in chapter 6. Good reason for that. Listen, the Bible says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Amen? That's a powerful Christian life. Filled, content, satisfied. That abundant life. Amen? Listen, we've got to yield to the right things. So know who we are in Christ. Count on that. Yield our bodies as instruments of righteousness. It's Romans 12. Boy, it reminds me in Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies or yield your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, that's the only logical response to the grace of God right there. Yield your bodies. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. These picture a sacrifice in the Old Testament. On the altar. Our lives to need to be a sacrifice to God every day. Pleasing to God. A fragrant aroma to God. Amen. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm burying this sin. Cleanse me, Lord. I'm ready to serve you today and see what you have for me. I'm going to yield my body as to righteousness today. I believe we ask him to do that. He will. That's what my Bible tells me. Amen. Think about it. The Bible says this. <laughs> but God be thanked. Verse 17. Look at it. But God be thanked that you were the servant, you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. You have believed the gospel. There's nothing you did yourself. You can't work your way there. You can't put enough money in the offering plate to get there. You can't come to church enough to get there. It's only by believing in what Jesus did for us on Calvary. The price he paid and the life available for us till he calls us home. Oh, Listen, there's life, all kind of life out there, but there's no life like the Christian life. There's no life like the Jesus life. I like it says, but God be thanked. Can you look back in your life on the day you got saved and remember who you were before God saved you and then sense in what he's done for you? Remember how you were? Huh? He came down to where you were. He reached way down for me. Because I was, like it says here, that you were servants of sin. I was a servant of sin. We all were before we got saved. We just, a lot of us won't admit it, but we were. I admit it, and I know it. But God be thanked. He came to where we was. But God be thanked that we were servants of sin. And we've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto us being made then free from sin. Thank God for that. And become the servants of righteousness. Oh, praise the Lord. It's found in Him. It's not found in the world. Listen, we got to bury the sin. Would you agree with me tonight? 
There's a life waiting. There's victory awaiting. We don't need to hang on to it. I don't know what's going on in your life tonight, but I know if there's sin, you need to bury it. It's time to yield ourselves to righteousness. Amen? So we can be filled. I don't know about you. I just don't want to putt-putt along and just kind of into heaven like a car that's barely running. I've had plenty of those. Amen. I want to go into heaven, my hair on fire, and go, whoa, what a ride that was. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. It's been a joy to serve you. And I finished my race with endurance. Amen. 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 I tell you what, God's been better to us than we deserve. Keep thinking about verse 17. Be a good time just to take a few minutes to thank God for what He's done for us. Amen. But God be thanked. Look back on who you were and who you are now in Him and the purpose He has for you. He's forever faithful. Sometimes I wonder what lies ahead. But if we just take it one day at a time, keep burying the sin, we can live in freedom. And enjoy this thing all the way to glory. Amen. 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 Let's all pray together. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word meets us right where we are. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is enough. It is sufficient. God, we are thankful that you're faithful as we confess our sins, that you are just and faithful and cleanses from all unrighteousness. Lord. I just pray tonight, Lord, as we take this time to examine our hearts, God, that you would listen to our prayers of repentance tonight, God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, so we can walk in that freedom and in that victory that you have for us to walk in moving forward. God, I pray, God, that uh, we would just be honest with ourselves, Lord. You already know what's in our heart that needs to go. Maybe there's a sin of unforgiveness that we keep digging up. Maybe there's a sin of some kind of problem between somebody that needs to be buried. Maybe there's an addiction that needs to be buried. Maybe there's some kind of other problem, some other sin, Lord, that needs to be buried. I pray, God, tonight we wouldn't leave till we buried everything that's hindering you from having your way in our life and keeping us from walking into victory that you have for us. And, oh, God, we pray that there be one here tonight, Lord, that has not yet been freed from the power of sin by trusting in your precious Son and what he did on Calvary. I pray that tonight would be the night that they get right with you. For your word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever should, that believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, God, have your way in our hearts. Let us honor you at this time. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's